Hey everyone, today we are dealing with a Samsung refrigerator and this time we are going to deal with the freezer. If you have a freezer that is not freezing, I want to show you a few different things you can do to get it to cool properly. In this scenario, the freezer is not cooling down as much as it should. Your ice cream soft, maybe things are starting to thaw. Let's try a few different ideas to get this back in order. Well, we'll take all the shelves out and then get to the back and I'm going to show you some great things to do. To access the freezer, let's start by pulling the trays out. On the top one, you'll pull forward while lifting up to remove it from its tracks. Now on the bottom drawer, you want to lift up on the rear portion, then pull backwards, then lift the front portion up as the drawer sits underneath a small ledge on the front door that you have to move the drawer around. Once you have this done, there are two 10 millimeter bolts on each side of the railing. I am using a socket wrench here which works, but it does take much longer than say a drill gun with a socket. Once you have both sets of the bolts removed, you're going to pull up on the door to remove it from the door slides which hold the door in place. From here, let's give ourselves a little bit more room to operate by removing this metal bar in the middle. There is a small plastic retention piece on the bar that you can remove with your fingers. Now once you remove this small piece, you can push the bar to the right into the sprocket housing, then you can remove the bar from the left side and out of the assembly. Note at this point the refrigerator is still on, and when we push the slides into the Samsung refrigerator, this particular model will activate the door lights and alarms. This is useful to know when testing the evaporator fan later on. Now if your unit has an ice maker in the freezer that blocks the evaporator panel, you need to remove it. On this particular model, there are two screws on the front of the ice maker that can be removed with a small Phillips head screwdriver. Once you take the screws out, you can pull towards the front of the refrigerator to remove the ice maker from the retention tabs. Now note there are two wire harnesses behind the ice maker once you remove it. The one on the front is to the ice maker and the rear one is for the heater to the fill tube. You don't need to unplug this rear one, but I did it anyway. Now you can remove the evaporator panel. There are two Phillips head screws holding the panel in place. Note yours may look a little bit different than this one and it's possible that there could be extra screws, but they will be quite easy to spot and remove. Once done, you can pull the panel forward to remove it from the housing. Be careful as on the top there is a hidden running fan, so you want to pull from the sides or the bottom and do it carefully. The reason that you want to do this is that there is a wire attached running the fan on the panel and to fully remove the panel you need to remove it from the harness. Now if by some reason you can't remove the panel and it looks or sounds like there's a lot of ice behind the panel, it's probable that the defrost system has issues and is causing problems to where it is not heating up and removing the ice, making this panel easy to remove. Now at this point you can do a forced defrost on the system and this is going to vary by the style of Samsung refrigerator you have. Please make sure to watch the video links that should be popping up now. If not, check the description for the links. You want to use the FD mode generally to remove the ice from the freezer. Now, if the force defrost system does not work, you're going to have to manually defrost the refrigerator by unplugging the refrigerator and either using a garment steamer to heat up the panel or use maybe like a box fan to push a lot of air to drain the water out. I don't suggest a hair dryer or even worse, a heat gun because it can start warping the plastic panels which have a low temperature point to melt. Also note that depending on your model, air may get into the refrigerator cabinet from the bottom to the top, so you may want to remove items from the refrigerator so they don't warm up too much, if in case you have to let it defrost for a significant amount of time. Once the panel can be removed, you can check to see if the fan is operating properly or not potentially. If the slides are in place, the door light should be off, allowing the fan to run like we see here in my example. When the door is shut, the fan will run. And this is very important to know because all Samsung refrigerators work this way. If the fan does not run when the doors are closed and the lights are off, you can do a voltage test on it and see if you can get the 12 VDC going to the fan, which would suggest it's working, at least from the board to the fan. If you need more room, to test the fan on the wire harness. There are some wire holders here that you can remove, but I didn't need to do that on this specific model. Now, since we know that the fan is good, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the refrigerator 
wire harness here for the panel and the fan so we can look at the components here on the system. Now at this point you probably want to unplug the refrigerator because when we remove this wire harness it's going to start spitting all kinds of errors out because we removed the evaporator fan. Once you have it removed we can inspect the components on this system. Here we have the thermostat that controls the temperatures in the cabinet. Then we have the thermal fuse in line with the defrost heater here. Now one of these two components could go bad, the fuse or the heater, to prevent the refrigerator from defrosting. Then we have the metal catch pan here for water. If you see a ton of ice build up at the bottom and nowhere else, it could need cleaned out and I'll show you how to do that soon. Now let's test some components of the defrost system. You need to have a multimeter and set it to ohms resistance. Locate the harness where the two yellow wires go from the sensor into the harness. You want to use the leads of your multimeter and press the two leads into each side of the yellow wires in the harness housing. In this example, you should get a reading roughly of around 5,000 ohms with the refrigerator at ambient temperature. Here's the exact chart to show you what you should expect based on the current temperature. If this reading is off by more than 10%, you want to change the sensor out with a new one. Next you want to do the same test with the multimeter. Press the two leads into the, where the two brown wires are going, which are for the defrost heater. You should get an ohm reading of between 40 and 80 ohms. If you don't get any continuity and you show an OL symbol, or something is insanely high, 200 ohms or more, then one of these two components is bad, preventing the refrigerator defrost system from warming up to remove the ice. And most of these styles on Samsung's you have to replace these together as a pair, and usually the model number will have both of these items together. Once you have these components checked, if there is a large amount of water or ice buildup near the drain hole, you want to flush it out with water. I used a plastic water bottle with a hole drilled into the cap and a simple plastic straw cut in half to build this simple pump system. It would allow you to squirt warm water into the hole until the obstruction is removed, which is typically ice, but it could be styrofoam or junk or something else, and you want to make sure that water can flush through the system, otherwise you're always going to have a problem. With these components taken care of, we should be able to put the panel back on carefully after all these tests, first putting the wire harness back into place for the evaporator fan. Then you can secure the panel by pressing it on. Make sure to press all over the panel to make sure any tabs seat in place to rest the evaporator panel against the housing. It needs to be very tight. Then you want to use a Phillips head screwdriver to reinsert the screws to both sides of the panel. To reinsert the ice maker, ensure that you have first reinstalled the wire harnesses to the ice maker and the fill tube if you haven't done that already. Also be aware of the fingers that hold the rear of the ice maker in place. These need set in place first. Then you need to thread the ice maker onto the fill tube as well. And doing these actions is relatively easy, and you do have a good bit of room to do it, especially if you don't have a camera in your face. Once you have the ice maker housing in place, you return the two screws to the ice maker and you're done with the freezer inside at this time. Next, you want to pull out the drawer glides and reinsert the metal piece into the glide sprocket. It's really important that the sprockets on both sides are lined up evenly, or it won't return to the proper position when the door is reinstalled with this metal guide. You can either pull the glides out all the way as far as they can go or in as far as they can to make sure that they are even. Make sure that the small retention tab is not in the metal piece, then reinsert the metal piece with the gears being even. Once that's in, install the tab and the gears should be in great shape. This is a real big concern to me, so I test them a few times before I start on the door. Now for the door, Make sure that the tabs line up and the door rests on the fingers of each side of the glides. There's only one way for the door to go on and it needs to align properly with the holes for the screws to go in. Once aligned, you can reinstall the two sets of screws with your 10 millimeter socket wrench or your drill gun preferably. Make sure that the screws are on very snugly so there's no play with the doors whatsoever. Then you're going to insert the drawers the same way you did when you took them out. Make sure the bottom drawer does not angle upwards once installed at the front of the door because there's usually a little shelf that will keep it to where it will not easily slide back into the refrigerator. Then the top drawer needs to be in between the rails properly. And if you have any sort of friction between these drawers, you probably have to reseat 
one or both of the drawers, typically the lower one. But now you're all done with the drawers and you can slide the freezer door back. Let's go check some other things now. Let's go ahead and push the rear of the refrigerator out and move it out of place. Once you're at the rear of the refrigerator now, at the very bottom, you need to use a Phillips head screwdriver and remove between six and eight screws from the metal panel. You want to lift it up and expose the compressor system. I think we found the culprit here. Um, this is really, really bad. Camera probably doesn't show how bad this is, but this is really bad for a newer Samsung refrigerator or any refrigerator, really. The dirt here is going to prevent the system from operating at peak efficiency. It's going to run longer. It's going to use more electricity and it definitely shouldn't have this much dirt on it because the dirt on the back coils like this is like having ice on the coils inside the fridge. It prevents the heat from being distributed. You're exchanging heat on a refrigerator. You're exchanging the cold air for the fridge for hot air in these coils right here. And if these coils can't blow the hot air out or cycle through the system rather from here over through the condenser fan to the compressor, well, it's just not gonna get as cold as it should. So we're gonna go ahead and take a brush and uh, clean the devil out of this thing. And we are going to go from there and continue other tests on the system if this wasn't the culprit, but this is the culprit, at least on this unit. And if you need a cleaning kit, I do have it in the description. Um, it's exactly what I'm using here. To clean the coils, I have a shop vac behind the camera running while I clean the fins with this brush. There's a lot of dirt that will fly off the coils when I rub the brush up against the condenser coils when I clean, and the hose will suck up all the nasty dust that's in the air, leaving the cabinet really clean. I got a little bit too excited using my brush though, and it bent a few of the condenser fins in the process of cleaning, so you may want to be a little bit more gentle than me, but this should not cause any issues. I sell a much more complete system for your refrigerator and dryer, and it's going to be listed in the description if you ever want to clean this out because this is a constant problem for refrigerators and then dryer vents as well. Now let's look at the condenser fan. If the refrigerator is plugged in, it should be running practically at all times. If the condenser fan is not running, it could cause the unit to overheat in the rear, reducing the cooling capacity in the freezer quite a bit, much like the dirty coils we, that we saw just earlier. Usually though, if there is a problem with the fan, you're going to see a 23 error code on the UI, which would indicate that the condenser fan is bad and needs replaced, or I have seen some restrictions like animal hair clogging the condenser fan that needs removed. Next, one thing to look at is the drain tube can easily get clogged. This model only has one drain tube, and some of these refrigerators have up to three or even four drain tubes. You need to remove each one and make sure nothing is clogging up the entire housing with the small plastic piece on the inside. So you need to take it apart, inspect everything, and if the tube's damaged at all, make sure to replace the drain tubes as needed, or make sure they are very, very clean under warm, soapy water. There's a small tray guide underneath the tube, so when you reinstall, make sure it slides into the right place, otherwise it's going to be angled wrong into the drain pan. With this done, let's look at the last place on this refrigerator, which is the PCB and inverter assembly. It's all inside this case here, which has about four screws that need removed. Once you are inside this housing, the layout on your Samsung refrigerator is going to vary from this one. In this particular situation, we have a newer Samsung refrigerator and the control board and inverter system are all in one on this board, but many of the older models that I've seen, there's a separate inverter board and then the main control board. You want to look for the board with the extremely large capacitors and red light. This red light has an error code system that could suggest some problems with your unit and here are the error codes that you could possibly see. A solid red light means that it's operating properly but if you get a flash code, take the needed action. We typically see a lot of inverter boards go bad, so if it is suggesting a low voltage to the compressor, chances are that the board needs replaced. From here, you want to reinstall the metal panels on the rear of your refrigerator. These are all the main steps that I would suggest that you take on your Samsung refrigerator if it's not freezing properly. There are additional things to consider like a refrigerant leak, or the main control board is bad if the defrost system isn't working, but the refrigerator Freon is the last resort and not something to discuss in this video, as you definitely want to seek out a technician at that step. Hopefully though, this video helps you identify some potential issues and solves them. 
Now that we are at the end of the video, remember the parts that I talked about in the video, and here are some other Samsung refrigerator videos that I have done prior to this one. I hope this video helps you figure out your freezer. Take care and have a great day.